Welcome to Maya Well. It's home to the only Mezcal bar here in Sacramento. And today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about us at all. Drew? So I'm Drew. I work with JBS Imports. We specialize in bringing all kinds of cool Mexican spirits to the U.S. and distributing them all throughout California. So, so far we've been talking about a lot of mezcals and things like that, and I feel like we're getting comfortable. So the best thing to do is like, when you get comfortable with mezcal is to completely throw off your game and be like, now it's time to talk about Sotol. So Sotol is gonna come from one of two states in Mexico. It's either gonna be Chihuahua or Durango. And it's actually not an agave spirit. Now, a lot of people for a long time thought it was agave, but then of course scientists went in and they were all sciencey about it. They're like, no, it's actually closer to an asparagus. Right. And so now it's like, it's a, it's close related to this desert spoon plant. And what it's known as is the Dalsirian Willion. That's what Sotol is made out of. Now the process is very similar and they actually right. look very similar as well. They're just very small pinas is right. what they are. So we're talking about cooking them underground, crushing them for wild yeast fermentation. But the thing that really stands out about Sotol, in, in particular Sotoleros, the brand that we're drinking right now, is that it's a very terroir driven spirit. Correct. So it's like, no matter where you're at, now when we say terroir, it's, just, it's the same kind of terroir that we're talking about with wine. Right, exactly. So, so yeah, go ahead, explain terroir for us. Yeah, so terroir is, is the essence of, of a place or a region. So it, it's the soil composition, it's the weather, it's you know the temperature that's outside. Uh, it's every little thing that goes into it. Um, I think it's even the people. The people have a direct effect over terroir as well. Yeah, yeah. but I think that's when you start getting into like provenance of an area, right. you know? And it, and all of these different factors play into the final taste profile of Sotoleros. Like, I think this is a really fun type of spirit to move on to. Like, if you know, if you're really starting to enjoy mezcal, or you really like bacanoras, or if you know if you're a really big tequila enthusiast, right. I love introducing people to Sotol because it, it's so unique, it's so distinct, and it's just place within the Mexican spirits world. I mean, again, there's only two states that this is coming from, right. and a lot of these batch runs that they're doing. So like. You know, it's funny, this one is 120 bottles. Right, right? that's which, it. Which is like, it's not a lot, but we have bottles over there because this is the biggest collection in Sacramento that are 39 Correct. total. Yeah, that's which it. Which is crazy, how, how many places can you go where you can find 39 different bottles, right? right. So, um, let's try it. Yeah, absolutely. Let me know what you think. Yeah. Can I get some too? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was like, is he sticking the glass out? I don't know what his body is. He's throwing curveballs at us. Here we are. And you guys will notice that there's like a wax top on this. Um, wax tops historically are my nightmare, but that's why you come to the Mescaleria at Maya Well, so then someone else can deal with that wax top and you just get to enjoy the juice, which is what I love about exactly. it. Exactly. So, cheers. cheers. Salute. <laughs> So we just tasted this for the first time less than three minutes ago. Yeah, and I think both of us had physical reactions to just how amazing and how different this stuff really is. Right. And, and what I love about Sotol is that while it does have this really in-depth level of uh, uh, complexity, it's also very approachable. It's super approachable. And, and also what I like to call things that you, you drink over time and you get sick of. This is not something that you're gonna mm. get sick of. You're not gonna get any what I like to call palate fatigue from this. Right. Each sip's gonna be new. Each sip is gonna, you know, develop into more and more flavors that you find within the spirit, right? I, I think that's one of the things that I love so much about Mexican spirits is that there's a lot of them that, that are like that, right. you know? Now, Sotol is definitely a cut above above the rest. I mean, it's such a unique uh, you know, style and I really do love it, but you know, overall, when you're sitting here at the Mescaleria and you're experiencing all these different options that, that we have, it's just really incredible to to be able to witness so many different flavor profiles right. from the same place. Exactly. Like how crazy is that? I mean, obviously we all love Mexican food as well, right. and that extends to their spirits and to the alcohol that comes from there. And it's just crazy that it's been able to be captured by these guys who, I guess for lack of a better term, these, these people are artists. Like what they're right. doing is true artisan work. Right. You know, at the same time, like they're also entrepreneurs and they're doing really, really amazing stuff in a place that historically has been a poorer region. Right. You know, like 
I love the Sotoleros brand and, the, and one of the big reasons for it is because it's a collective of different producers throughout Chihuahua, right? Now, of course, you can have Sotolo from Durango too. There's some really amazing ones from there. But these guys focus solely on Chihuahua and each month, everybody that's underneath that collective, they're getting paid regardless. Yeah, irregardless if they're cultivating, distilling, or if mm -hmm. they're producing any bottles of any kind, they're yeah. still getting a paycheck. Yeah. Which I, I help, I, I think that helps to transform this into more just a spirit. It's, you know, a generational icon with stories. You I know? think, yeah, it's like it's having that financial security where you don't feel like you have to put out a product that's inferior right. just to make sure that you can still pay your bills and, and all those things. Like, you know, these guys are able to experiment with different types of combinations. One of the cool things about Sotoleros is it's very, very Sotol heavy, but there is right. agave that grows in Chihuahua, right? Exactly. And they do all kinds of different ensembles, which is a combination of different Sotols and agave together. They're doing pachugas where they're incorporating different meat products. It's just, they can afford to experiment because no matter what, at the end of the day, the man in charge, Ricardo Pico, the legend himself, Right. Make sure that everybody is taken care of every single month. So, you know, a lot of a lot of what we're trying to do now, you know, you want to drink with confidence, right? You want to drink, you want to drink things where people are all walking away happy from the situation, right. from the producer to you sitting in that bar seat. And Sotoleros is a great way to do that. Yeah, and and you know, everybody nowadays wants an experience, and this will definitely give you experience, and it will get, it will also give you a story that you can tell, yeah, and, and keep telling. And I think everything just comes full circle. And I Absolutely. think this is one of those spirits that helps tell the story. And there are so many different options here at the Mescaleria. We have a lot of Sotoleros, so come down, check it out. Uh, do a flight, get as many as you can. Compare the different batches to each other because they're right. going to be different, and that's what's really cool about this stuff. Yeah, each one is different. So I invite you all to come down. Uh, you know, tell us what your favorite Satol is, what your favorite Mezcal is. And if it's uh, not here, let's get it in here so we can talk about it together. Absolutely. Salute, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.